On September 15th, Nike created a revolutionary new basketball shoe. On October 18th, the NBA threw them out of the game. Fortunately, the NBA can't stop you from wearing them. Air Jordans from Nike. That was one of the first commercials for Nike's Air Jordans. In the 1980s, sneakers were rising in popularity, with superstars like Michael Jordan fueling the flames with his own shoe, the Air Jordan. He created something that nobody was ready for. Something so evil it seems made up. The murder of Michael Eugene Thomas for his pair of basketball shoes. How media and influencers approach this is key to how the death of this child created such a debate around the U.S. James David Martin did not receive a normal childhood. He had to suffer the fate of having an abusive mother. She would beat him and his sister constantly, leaving Martin with permanent mental trauma. The trauma wouldn't end there, though. Martin had to witness his sister getting beat to death by the hands of his own mother. This was the incident that started it all. Martin was sent to Meade, Maryland, to live with his grandmother after the death of his sister, in hopes of getting a fresh start on life. This is where he would grow up to meet his friend, Michael Eugene Thomas, a kid who, like a lot of people, idolized Michael Jordan and would do anything to be like him. He's one of the biggest names in the world. His influence has been unmatched. Everyone wanted to be like Mike. No matter where you were, Michael Jordan was with you. With that much influence, there's bound to be controversy. It all started with the release of his shoe, Nike's Air Jordan 1. During the initial release, these shoes were banned by the NBA, due to their colors not complying with the NBA's rules. Nike knew this was an opportunity to heavily promote the shoes, marking them as the banned shoes. The Air Jordans were hit with the public, and everyone wanted a pair of the shoes. Kids would save up all their money just to get one pair, and Thomas was not going to miss out. With the help from his father, Thomas managed to scrounge up $115 to purchase a pair of Air Jordans. Those were his babies. He worshipped those shoes. Thomas would clean them every single evening when he got home from school. Thomas was one of the lucky few kids who had a pair of Air Jordans. It's 1989, and Thomas is getting ready for school. And today, he plans on showing off his new pair of shoes, his two-week-old pair of Air Jordans. His grandma, however, Bertie Thomas, was not happy with his selection of shoes. Quote, We told him not to wear the shoes to school. We said somebody might like them. Quote, Granny, before I let anyone take those shoes, they'll have to kill me. At the end of the school day, Thomas was walking home with his friend, James David Martin. He didn't return home that evening. He had disappeared. Nobody knew where he was. That was the case up until a group of children found him. Thomas was found in a forest near the school, dead. He had been strangled to death, his body left untouched, but his shoes stripped from his body. After this incident and the company Sports Illustrated found out about Thomas's death and the means of death. They released the article, Your Sneakers or Your Life. The article debated who's at fault for the death of children and adults alike due to the release of Nike's Air Jordans. The shoe was too expensive for a lot of customers, so they had to resort to other options just to get their hands on a pair. The public would call them wolves, the local yokels during the 80s. They would loiter behind shoe stores and wait for kids to walk out with a fresh pair of shoes. After that, they would then jump them and strip them of their possessions. More often than not, they weren't going to kill you. If they could knock you out and take your stuff, they were going to. In the public eye, this was a black youth thing, due to the crimes heavily residing in more black populated areas. Companies such as Reebok, Nike, and Adidas were using swole black athletes in almost all their advertising, creating a desire to want to be like their heroes. 
even if it's just the shoes they wear. All these problems were due to overpriced sneakers and advertisements that made the black youth feel as if it were necessary to buy what their idols wore. There were very few attempts by athletes to try and abolish these crimes. Shortly after the article went public, NBA superstar center Hakeem Olajuwon released his own shoe in collaboration with Etonic, an activewear company. It was titled The Dream, priced just under $40. Olajuwon's plan was to create a quality sneaker that people who were riding the poverty line could afford. He debated the fact that corporations were overpricing shoes and that they did not care for the consumer's well-being. They were only in it for the money. Quote, how can a poor working mother with three boys buy Nike's or Reeboks that cost $120, Elijah Wan said upon the release in 1995. Quote, she can't. So kids steal these shoes from stores and from other kids. Sometimes they kill for them. And this statement still holds true today. Crimes that are a result of the sneakers that someone is wearing are still happening to this day. Companies like And One are attempting to put a stop to this by creating quality and affordable shoes priced at $15 to $30. There's only one problem to this. The shoes sell at discount stores, such as Walmart, creating a distaste for the shoes as it leads to teasing and bullying by others. Sneaker crime is not going to change until someone that is connected to the youth pushes for a cheaper and quality shoe that everyone can afford. At the end of the day, sneaker crime isn't going to stop until we get someone that's willing to sacrifice a paycheck to save lives. Companies like Nike, Adidas, and Under Armour will not be taking the first step. It's up to us, the consumers of these products. It's up to us to be willing to push towards the cheaper shoes. Even if we get laughed at, we have to stand up for what's right, not what helps us fit in.